130 years ago, Lord Kelvin said, when you cannot measure what you are speaking about, when you cannot express it in numbers, then your knowledge is of a meagre and unsatisfactory kind. It may be the beginning of knowledge, but you have scarcely in your thoughts advanced to the stage of science. This quote really resonates with me because for the past decade, I've been trying to take the measure of mysterious and unmeasurable diseases like autism, mood disorders, or ALS. And when we think about measurement, we often think of the tools we have that we're born with, our hands, our feet, the length of our stride, and for a long time, that was sufficient for most measurement. But as we develop more sophisticated tools, we need more sophisticated measurements, ones that were precise, that could be calibrated, so that parts assembled in many different parts of the world would work together harmoniously in a system. So where are we with measurement when it comes to medicine? On the one hand, we have diseases that are measured well, HIV, heart disease, and cancer, where we've made uh, amazing progress. But on the other hand, we have the diseases that I study. Uh, we have mood disorders, or we have the rare diseases um, that affect so many people and, and remain unmeasured. And it's a huge challenge. There are no inches of insomnia. There are no pounds of pain. And some diseases skirt the boundaries between these two domains. Something like multiple sclerosis has incredibly detailed technological measurement. This is a three-dimensional cube MRI scanner by GE. And to the trained eye, the hyper-intense white spots can be visualized in three dimensions down to the level of a millimeter. So you might think we have it covered. But it turns out that's not the whole story. Where the lesions are or how big they are doesn't actually correlate all that well to the experience that a patient has living with the disease on a day-to-day -day basis. Because each of our brains is slightly different, it's very hard to assemble data about groups of patients or how they change over time. And of course, an MRI is an expensive and sophisticated piece of technology, which means our opportunity to sample patients over time is limited too. So my concern is that right now, our knowledge of MS remains of a meager and unsatisfactory kind. I have faith, though, that there are a group of pioneers who can help us change this. They're the patients that live with the disease every day. For the past seven years, I've been working with the online patient network at Patients Like Me to help patients like Jess with MS here to measure her disease. We constructed an MS rating scale consisting of seven simple questions about her cognition, her speech, her vision, her swallowing, her walking. And it turns out these measures correlate very well with a neurological assessment done by a trained clinician. She can do this as many times a month or a year as she wants to. When you have data such as we have, we have about 200,000 patients in total, about 30,000 of them with multiple sclerosis, you can start aggregating that data up. This is a prototype that we made with One Mind for Research and Orion Bionetworks, which takes all of the data about every patient and uses it to make an individualized, personalized prediction of where Jess with MS will be two years from now, along with appropriate statistical confidence intervals. So when you have the right measures, you can do amazing things. But there's a void to be filled of measurement in medicine. There are only a few hundred instruments like the MS rating scale that have been developed and validated with patients in mind for the thousands of diseases that we have. But I think we can change that too. Today, I'm proud to announce that with the support of the Robert Wood Johnson Foundation this year, patients like me will be building an unprecedented new open science platform. Disease experts and researchers from around the world will be able to come to patients like me and develop new instruments. They'll be able to listen to the patients that live with disease every day, immediately and in real time, so they can iterate on the instruments, improve upon them, and then deploy them. Best of all, every instrument developed on the platform will be licensed under Creative Commons, so that the instruments will be free for anyone, forever. So with hundreds of instruments, imagine what we could do. Then think of all the other technologies that we don't yet have, when we integrate Google Glass, when we integrate the medical tricorders. Then we're really going to be able to understand these diseases and learn about them. Not for curiosity, not for publication, not for profit, but to take them apart one by one and consign them to the history books. Thank you.